Yeah, that one's on. <laughs> Take care, man. Someone's mic's still on. Oh, your mic's on. Come on. And let's go. You want to put it down? Sweet. All right. Well, greetings and salutations, dear friends. Eddie and Ben reporting live from inside of Flynn's, located at Margate, Florida. Of course, on Monday evenings, we're closed to the general public, but we bring you some epic Gundam talk and things about kits and model building, and we have some really cool discussion points to talk about today. So thanks so much for tuning in, all nine of you. I just wanted to uh, start the chat off just kind of giving you guys a preface. First of all, if um, you don't know, you should have known, hopefully by all our posts and our uh, different videos and everything, we're going to actually have this Saturday at... Two or from 2 to 10 p.m., we'll be having our family fun day and back to school bash here at Flynn's. That's on Saturday, this upcoming Saturday, which is the 29th. And we're going to have all sorts of things like cotton candy and popcorn and giveaways and obviously the video games and arcade games. And it's just going to be a great time all together. We're going to make some boba tea and have all that good stuff. Just wanted to create an event and a time that we can all come together and families and students and everybody can come together and just kind of like, I don't know, chill out and have a good time. So I have a couple of the giveaways with me, actually, and I just wanted to take a moment. Hey, Brian, what's up, man? I uh, wanted to take a moment, just kind of show off some of the giveaways. So first off, we actually have a number of pops that have been donated by our friends over at Everyone Loves Figures. So a lot of times when it comes to the giveaways, guys, this is how we do it. We actually have, or better yet, as people come in, for the, for the day, be it whatever time, we actually start off with giving everybody two raffle tickets or two giveaway tickets so upon entry. And then we'll do their giveaways throughout the event. So we'll do it, I believe the first one will start at about three o'clock will be the first giveaway. And then we'll kind of work our way through it every hour on the hour, hopefully as close to it as possible until pretty much we've gotten all the different um, giveaways uh, given out. So we have giveaway items from um, our friends here, from Everyone Loves Figures. And we also are going to be having some giveaway prizes from um, Karma Bath Co. We're going to be having some giveaway prizes from Sarah, who's actually a realtor with, I believe, Keller Williams. We're going to have some giveaway prizes from Escape Rooms locally. And uh, just other, I could go on and on, and hopefully ASO Figures and IG Toy Store and Bits and Buttons. We're going to have a bunch of really cool giveaways and once again, this is just, I just wanted to kind of show you some of the, the, the pieces that we're going to be giving away. Hey, Varun, what's up, man? Uh, some of the giveaways that we're going to be uh, giving away that day. Um, but of course, by all means, don't necessarily come for just the giveaway. So hopefully you come to enjoy yourself. But uh, yeah, I just want to, once again, give a shout out to everyone Lost Figures for the Spider-Man, Hello Kitty, and everybody that they're donating in terms of the pops. Uh, and everyone's going to be giving two giveaway tickets to kind of get the night, uh, the day and the night started. And of course, guys, this is entirely family friendly. So, you know, bring the little ones, bring everyone and anyone. And we're going to be having, once again, popcorn and uh, cotton candy, which will be a first for Flynn's. Super stoked for that. And uh, hey, man, Miguel, hey, what's up, man? Uh, wanted to, I had a brain fart. Uh, wanted to just mention that to you guys so you guys know what's going down. So anyways, that's this Saturday from 2 o'clock 
to 10 o'clock. Of course, we're open from 1 p.m. to 2 a.m. on Saturdays, but the event is running from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. And we're going to also have uh, my friend Jordan is going to be coming as Spider-Man as a photo op for everybody who wants to snag a picture with Spider-Man that day as well. So anyways, guys, that is the, I don't know, the instructions uh, or not instructions, the advertisements, if you will, for the upcoming event. And I want to also just give a, uh, a reminder that we do our build and paint nights here at Flynn's every Thursday night at 8 o'clock. We start at 8, and most of us go to about midnight or so. Depending. We, yeah, depending if we have if, – well, if they have work. So if they, have work in the, if they have work in the morning or something like that. So usually our, um, our build and paint nights go from about – uh, 8 p.m. to about, you know, close, which is about midnight. And, of course, you can bring any kit you want to work on. Uh, we have people working on all types of kits, right? Yeah, you got people that bring in, like, the D&D minis. The minis. There are people that bring in, obviously, the Gundam kits. And then you got uh, – one of the guys was bringing in, like, a really old kit from the 80s yes. working on that yes, and stuff. Yes, So was. you see a nice variety of stuff, whatever you're into. And if you've never built model kits before, too, you guys have a selection of stuff that you can buy that – uh a lot of it's beginner friendly, and like I said, we have tools and things you can you guys can use. So, are yeah, exactly. And also, guys, I have to I have to commend Ben. Like everybody that comes in, and and everybody who attends, be it Ben, Roxy, everybody who shows up, because it changes from week to week. You know, sometimes we have you know right. a handful, sometimes schedules. we have ten to twelve. You know, it depends how many we have. And on our build and pay nights. The arcade is open at the same time because we kind of like use a space to its maximum potential. So we have the tables in the center and all that good stuff. So if you do want to come enjoy the arcade on Thursday nights, by all means, but we are building in the center um, where really there wouldn't be any arcade games there anyways. So <laughs> it really, it doesn't, that doesn't change anything. So uh, we do have a uh, Varun D and D online tonight too. That is correct. We have our D and D. I mean, all these events that Flynn's does now, I would have never thought in a million years, it would have happened this quickly, but we also do D Dungeons and Dragons on right. uh, Monday nights and Saturday nights. Hey, Gerald, uh, Monday nights and Saturday nights at 7 p.m. And all the details are in our events page on our Facebook that you can easily check out. And uh, the links are there for the Discord and for the Roll20 or, yeah, I think it's Roll20. It's Roll20 and all that good stuff. And we have Rune and everybody who's handling that as well, all our DMs. So that's also a really great time. So just a bunch of events we do here at Flynn's, but of course, this is Let's Talk Gundam, so I'm going to allow, um, I'm going to give the floor to Ben, because I know sometimes we have people who want to ask him specific questions, right. and they even come to Bill Knight just to ask you questions, and, yeah, and, that's always fun. and uh, kind of tweak your, you know, pick your brain at what, what to do, how to do it, um, but anyways, so Ben, where can they, number one, you can let the people know who you are and where to find you and right. all that stuff. Well, uh, my name is Ben, aka Uber's Cosplay. Uh I'm primarily known in South Florida for doing giant robot costumes, Gundams, that kind of thing. But I also do a lot of modeling, uh, model kits, props, things like that as well. And I always like to come out to the build nights. But if you guys want to follow me online, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, pretty much all the major social media as Uber's Cosplay, U-B-E-R-S Cosplay. And like, like uh, Ed said, you can come out to build night every Thursday. And I'm usually just there working on something of my own. But if you just want to come out and either see what the hobby's like or maybe get a little advice, maybe see some tools, or like you said, it's just pick my brain. Come on out. You know, talk and hang out and have fun with Gunpla. That's what it's all about. Yeah, and all skill levels are welcome. So we have mm -hmm. had children at, at some point in time. It's family friendly. Right. We have had grown adults, you know, like us, obviously, being there. <laughs> And then as the world continually changes we're and progresses, at heart. yeah, we're children. Exactly. <laughs> Some of us never grow up. Um, as the world progresses in whatever direction is going to go, we're going to definitely begin, hopefully, to see more and more people come out as this becomes bigger and bigger. So, yet last week, or did you want to kind of mention what did you, you want to do first, Ben, today? Did you want to mention the new kit that we have here for people? Well, yeah. What did you want to do? Uh, you guys did uh, kind of like a little flash order of some stuff mm -hmm. that was pretty popular. Mm hmm. And I wanted to kind of highlight those. One of the ones you guys got, and this has been really popular, was the Real Grade Evangelion Unit 1. I can switch to the other camera so they can see on that side. Oh, yeah. Yeah, everything's in the way. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's better just to keep it up front okay, for those right. until we're talking yeah. about the kids. Yeah, but the, R grade, the Real Grade Evangelion Unit 1. This is pretty much the newest of the Real Grades to come out. Um, the Real Grade... What really sets this one, these model kits apart from everything else 
is the detail. The oh, heck detail yes. of these heck yes. is insane. It's the detail of some of these bigger kits in a package half the size. Yeah, it's the same size as a high grade. The same scale as a high grade, but way more complicated. Usually full internal skeleton and nearly perfect color. Almost no stickers required. So everything you see on this guy, all these purples and greens and the oranges, that's all molded in that color. You don't need any kind of plastic or paint, any kind of paint or stickers mm -hmm. to get it looking like that. It looks like that right out of the box. And just like any other Bandai kit, no glue required. But these are really great if you want to like really try a really challenging model because it's very complicated, very detailed and everything like that. And everything like that. So if you're really looking at a real grade you want to try out and maybe you've been on the fence about right. getting into the, the newer real grade kits, this is a great one to go for. And I think you guys have already sold a few of them as well. Yeah, we've already sold. Well, we sold one of these and we had four in total. We have a couple of people, obviously, we spoke about it earlier that could be coming in the next you know, couple of days. And really, you don't know. Someone could walk through the door and buy all of them. Not likely, but it could happen. Hey. And when we say real grade, guys, obviously, for those of you who don't know what that means, we're referring to the RG in the upper, what is that, left-hand corner? Yeah. Um, so grades just refers to the complexity of mm -hmm. the kit. Mm -hmm. um, the, the main ones you see a lot of is the high grade, which is about this size. Good detail, but not a lot of internal detail. Usually right. not much of any. But, um, and some stickers for the colors. And, co and you can expect not perfect color accuracy. Usually pretty good, but you can expect to have a few stickers and things like that. And at the higher end, you have the master grade, which is the price point is higher, but the detail is higher and everything like this. This is kind of smack dab in the middle. Right. The price is higher, the size is smaller, but the detail is still very high. I have to say that with real grade, like the most complex kit that I built so far was the real grade, the crossbones one. Mm -hmm. That one took me days because of how tiny the little pieces were, and yeah. it was really... It was complex. Yeah, but like the bigger kits, when the like when you move the arms mm -hmm. and the legs and everything, all the armor slides and moves. So it's it's not so much static like these ones tend right. to be. Right, right, exactly. They'll, it's very it's very like organic. It moves, and even more so with the Evangelions because they have such a a live, like a high rate look. of articulation. Yeah, they're they're like a super like gangly looking monster. Now this robot. isn't Gundam. This is not Gundam. Um, if you're going to talk about like animes that are influential. Mm -hmm. Gundam and Evangelion are probably the top two. Okay. Uh, Evangelion is kind of a very cerebral story. Like right. You look at it and you think, oh, it's a show about robots. Right. It's, 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 to even get into what the story's about, <laughs> people could fill volumes trying to figure out. It's kind of like a 2001 A Space Odyssey. Aren't there they people, like spirits or something like that or monsters? It's the body of a dead angel covered in armor. There you go. Okay. That's, I knew it was something like that. It's I insane. Knew. But it, like 2001 A Space Odyssey, you know, people are debating now, what's, what the heck did Stanley Kubrick mean by the space baby? People are debating now, what did Hideki Anno mean with all the exploding crosses at the end of the show? I don't know. I don't think he knows. It looks cool. The robots are cool. The models are fun. The show is pretty nuts. It's worth checking out. Yeah. But we have here. Great kits, bad show. One guy no, says. Yeah, Richard, Rick. So. Uh, Rick, one of Will's buddies, one of our buddies, he said, great kids, bad show. We have Sean. The articulation on the real great is amazing. Yeah. And uh, and Sean even said, yes, it's a very nice kit. I, I agree. It's, it's, uh, it didn't mean anything. It didn't mean anything. <laughs> Evangelion is very divisive. You can see what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could imagine. It, it would be a show to watch, but I just want to let people know that there are yeah. differences in, and, in kits or, yeah. or what they're about. And just like Gundam, how Gundam's been running for 30, 40 years, mm -hmm. Evangelion came out in the mid '90s, and they're still doing movies and stuff now, and mangas and reimaginings and everything. Okay. So it's a continuing story. You don't you don't necessarily have to see the show, but if you get the model kit and you like the show, there's modern things for you to go to that are coming out that are that will get you into these kits. And of course, we have the Eva here at Flynn's. Right. We just got a couple in, or we have three left. Yeah, guys, get them now because everything they order is like going so fast. We'll faster talk about than, that in a second yeah, too. Yeah, faster than we had anticipated. So, yeah, like you had moving picked up on. A, you had picked up a couple of these ones, which is the Nobel Gundam, kind of the Sailor Moon style Gundam. I think you can probably fit that in the second. Yeah, you can fit that on uh, the webcam. next window. Yeah, uh, and of course. Even if you're not into Gundam, I think everyone just loves the idea of a Sailor Moon robot. So these are great. You guys had four of these, and these are already gone, I had, unfortunately. I, I got the shipment on. I got the shipment on Friday, right before I came to Flynn's because we opened at five o'clock on Fridays. I was like, "Cool, you know, we'll have it here. People will get to be able to pick it up." And guess what? Gone. 
So how about getting the unit double zero RG? You know, with how good the Evangelion units are selling in the kits, I, if, I, if we see more of them, I think I'll definitely be voting to get some more of them. So I think also the one kit that I was shocked that actually moved fairly quickly was, and, I, and I'm going to butcher it, but it was that the... The girl mechs, the the oh the the mecha musume kits. Yeah, those kits. Those yeah. two were gone. We actually, I think, on Thursday night or Thursday or Wednesday night. It was anyways. It was one of those nights. They both were gone immediately. Yeah, they are very popular. I get so. the guy right here says he got the last one of the Nobel Gundam. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Nice oh, yeah. Sean. Sean. Oh uh, yes, Sean. Actually, I met Sean last night. Sean is um, a local. He is there. They live in I think Davieish area. And so they plan, hopefully, in the next couple build nights. I know we talked about that last night. Hopefully, he'll be coming out. Yeah, if he pick picked one up, he's got to come out and build He it. picked up the Nobel, and he picked up one of the 30-minute missions. Okay, good, good As picks. well. Good so he definitely has some interesting picks. Do we have any other comments here? It says, Sean, it looks cool. It describes 90% of anime. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We Why have... does it have a giant lion on its chest? <laughs> because it looks cool. <laughs> Right, <laughs> exactly. Oh, it's a huge monster. Let's just let's just make it. Let this make it cool. Yeah. Look cool. I've been getting really into like the uh, what do they call them? The uh, Godzilla. What's Godzilla considered? A kaiju. A kaiju. Kaiju, kaiju films and shows. Yeah, ki yeah, exactly. Like yeah. you know, like Pacific Rim and you know, yeah, they like have, Pacific Rim. They have all those as well. So hopefully we'll be seeing you know I think a live action Gundam movie. Yeah, Legendary is doing one. Oh, uh, finally. They, yeah, they haven't announced much about it, but um. Legendary's behind it. Supposedly, um, a lot of the like uh, Sunrise is taking a lot, a lot more involvement in it mm -hmm. because, like I said, uh, I mentioned previously, they had done a live action Gundam before uh, for the twentieth anniversary, but it was very underfunded. It, it was like very cheap. Like right. they were walking around in, in Starship Troopers extra soldiers. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't even have their own costume department. It was oh very very cheap. But. Uh, didn't do well. <laughs> Gee, savior not to be spoken about. Yeah, it's kind of the the, the, the gun that shall not be named. But, so uh, hopefully we see a legendary make a new one. Legendary's going to make a new one. No idea if it's going to be based on anything else. It might be completely standalone, but Sunrise is throwing a lot more of their weight behind it. So hopefully it's going to be something good. And you got a little taste of that with Ready Player One when you saw yes. the Gundam show up. It's like, this can be done. Well. It can be done well. It's just, is there, the, is there the audience for it? And you know, Hollywood, they're always looking for the next big thing. And for a while, it's been video games and superheroes. You know, if it's anime next, who knows? Yeah, I, I think that transition from anime is accepted in the United States, but it's very, it's still kind of, I don't know. I mean, shows like, what is it? Uh, Demon, was it Demon? Not Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer, Demon yeah. Slayer right? Yeah. Demons, I think that's a band. So like, no, but yes, <laughs> the show. Demon Slayer, uh, was it Academia? Yeah, uh, Boku no Hero Academia. Yeah, that one. My Hero Academia. You have, I mean, here am I butchering all these names, but you have, you know, you have obviously Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon who are pretty right. much Americanized, but like, I wonder really whether or not that transition can make a full transition. Like, I mean, I'm talking like a very, very Japanese anime that's very unknown. There, there's <laughs> that certain, transition. There are certain things that I think play only to people that are into anime. Okay. And then there are some things which I think are a little more universal. Like I, like I tend to think Gundam is actually pretty universal. Yeah, I could, I could like, see that. There's not there. There are certain things about Gundam that are very anime. Like when I think about the Sailor Moon Gundam and the show that's from. Right, exactly. For lack of a better explanation, the show this one is from is basically Dragon Ball Z with robots. Oh, okay. So they're actually right. robots doing martial arts stuff. Maybe not something that the average person would be like. This is weird. I don't like this. Whereas some of the original Gundam is more or less just World War II in space. Okay. Something that a lot more general audiences could probably So like behind. a Starship Troopers, like a like even like a Star Wars kind of It's it's a lot more like Star Wars if you're going to compare it to someone because okay. Starship Troopers has that like ultra violence aspect to it. Yes, There's yes, violence yes. in Gundam but no, not like any not like People Starship aren't being Troopers. torn in half. Yeah, no, nothing <laughs> quite that. There are things but they're few and far between. But more like Star Wars, like an epic ballad if Yeah, you know, space it's ballad. a space opera. A space that opera. Kind there you of go. Thing. So I think I think certain things, certain types of anime, are will do better in America than other than other types. So we'll have to wait and see. I promise you, people, if if Gundam makes a live action, we will have to have a field trip to a movie theater. Yeah. I will pri I will book that theater myself, and all of us can go together. You yeah. know, what I'm saying? Like, you, want, you want to talk about a movie that's going to just hinge so much on casting? It's going to be a Gundam movie because. 
Some, some of those lines are going to be d- difficult for anyone to deliver with a straight face. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, it's also like, I wonder whether or not, like, when they did Ready Player One, when I saw Ready Player One mm-hmm. um, in, in the theaters, I mean, I had read the book previously, and nowhere it mentions, it was actually um, Ultraman. It was I Ultraman, think. but, like, a ton of Mecha gets mentioned in the book. Yeah. And well, Mechagodzilla? Mechagodzilla. Yeah, Mechagodzilla, he there, fights but, him, he fights him. But they... I think it was just a matter of like licensing because Bandai right. owns a lot of stuff and they probably just went to them and like, what do we, what do you want to put in there? Gundam. It's our big right, thing. Right, right. But I, and think, I heard they weren't, weren't going to get able to get Ultraman because um, of the other. That's owned by Toei, I think. Yeah. So it's a different studio and I can't imagine what the licensing for something like Ready Player One must, must have looked like. It must have been just like an encyclopedia with all those freaking licensing agreements. <laughs> well, then when you have, when you have, uh, when you have Steven Spielberg directing the film right. and he owns, have you read? Have you read Freddy Player One? I haven't read. I've read parts of it. Okay, so you know it's heavily laden. Yeah, it's it's all over. So you know, and I heard that he didn't want to include all his items and make it like a you know a montage of Steven Spielberg, you know. But nonetheless, my whole point is that when you saw the RX leap yeah. out, it was impressive to see how it did it. Well, the was thing, the size ratio correct? It was correct. It was actually scaled correctly. But the thing too is you could tell that whoever was animating it knew Gundam. Because it, when it comes out, it does like a pose. It's right. Like it's, ching. it's a pose from Double Zeta Gundam. And it's only in the opening of that animation. Ah. So it's like, okay, whoever did this, they know Gundam. And I like that. <laughs> because it's, it's, it's being treated with some kind of care. Like they know what they're doing and they're kind of winking at you. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's the well, Gundam, it, and it's doing the double Zeta pose. Well, you think, I mean, you if when they gave consent, or whatever the loyalty, the royalty was, when they gave consent in order mm-hmm. for that to be in the film, right? they must have really put some heavy stress on, like, you have to do it this way. I guarantee they were thinking about, okay, we will not do the G-Savior thing again. If we're going to do this, we're going to be involved from the get-go. We're going to decide how it looks, we're going to decide what it does, and who's, who's controlling it and everything. They were probably very particular about it. And I think that's one of the reasons, the only, one of the only reasons why they've given Legendary that that property in the first place, because they know they can do something with it, being the background of Pacific Rim and everything. Because if you watch any of the background uh, documentaries about Pacific Rim, yeah. Del Toro was a huge yeah, kind of fan. Yeah, and there's like, yeah. there's videos of him going to the life-size statue in Japan and being like, yes, this is what I want in my movies. And you see Pacific Rim, and you're like, yes, giant robots, and they move with weight, and they behave like they would in real life it's not just like it's not just superheroes smashing into each yeah it's not a guy in a plastic suit you know yeah and not to rag on transformers but the the transformers michael bay movie it's very hard to tell what's going on a lot of time because it's so fast and the action's all over the place but the pacific rim everything was very deliberate and it had very much a lot of weight to it which is how that would best be portrayed and i think that's one of the reasons why they said you like even the fist, like that one scene where it's like, whoosh, and yeah, they like have like you feel some. You have like the the like the, the boost of the rockets <laughs> like behind it. I mean yeah. that that movie in itself was interesting. I mean I don't once again the casting I wasn't super thrilled about the mid lead yeah. actor. Il- Ildris Elba carried that movie. He yeah. really did. So it's it's <laughs> anyways. Nonetheless, everyone else is kind of like who we know. Uh, we know that it's coming. Hopefully, we have some questions coming through the pipeline. Yeah. So let's see what they say. So who plays? <laughs> So Varun asks, who plays Amiro? Amaro. Um, 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 so, character. I mean, that would be, I don't know who would oh, play geez. that. Spider-Man? The kid who plays Spider-Man? You know, I... He could I, do it? He's not the first one to mention... You're not the first one to mention that. That could work. He's kind of got the look about him. It's and just, he's got the that toyfulness. The show was in the 70s, so everyone kind of had the fro thing going on. Yeah, he could do so, it. So, <laughs> it's just a matter of who, who's going to pull off that hairstyle. And also, uh, Amaro gets, like, the crap beat out of him a lot. Like, so the actor has to be willing to get, like, slapped around. On, and also physically on physically fit. I mean, I imagine it'd be pretty demanding because it'd be in space. So it'd well, be in, like... that and Amaro in the original show is, like, 15. That's right. Yeah, so he's, like, a young kid. Uh, the, I don't know how old the Spider-Man guy is now, but he might be getting a little old for the role. Well, that's and, why they casted him in, well, from what I read in, in Marvel, because he was on the younger side. Right, because they, they want, the other they want to have older. him for a couple of years. Yeah, like Tobey Maguire and the other guy. But anyways, we don't want to get distracted. Yeah, so, yeah. Tom Holland, that's We guy. have everybody... From, oh, hey, from Twitch... We have uh, Miami Gumpla. I forgot actually want to give a shout out to Miami Gumpla Club. He's uh, responding to us through Twitch. Um, guys, uh, we're actually going to be doing a giveaway at this particular build night. And that's hopefully something that we plan to integrate into our build nights. Mm-hmm. So 
Um, this week's giveaway, I believe, is the RX-78. Was it the Origin? Ooh. Was it the Origin one? Am that I, I eligible you? for that? Or am I yeah, not? no, everyone's, or, okay, everyone, yeah, everyone's yeah. eligible for it. Anyone who comes to build, you just can't show up. You have to like actually have something to physically work on. The um, rock plays Amaro. Oh, my God. Fund it. I, I want to see that. That would be nuts. That would be nuts. <laughs> I mean, the rocks and everything else. I mean, Black Why Adam, not? I mean, why not? He's local, too, so maybe we can get him to come by. So <laughs> we have... So uh, let's see what else we got. So yes, so the giveaway, we're going to be doing that. We're also going to be doing a gun. We're going to be rolling out a, a Gunpla Club here at Flynn's. More details to be announced a little later. Yes. We have, I still haven't watched Ready Player One. Gerald Rock says yes. Zombie. I agree. Uh, how about the life-size <laughs> Grandpa Gundam in Japan? That, that's true. There is one there, Sean. I mean, I guess they could use that as a reference. But yes, it is life size. The, the Rock isn't ugly enough to be Dozel. It has to be like, uh, who's the guy that played Hellboy? Are you talking about uh, Paul Newman? No, no, the original Hellboy. The first movie. Yeah, Paul Newman. I don't know. What's it? Ron Newman. Ron something. Ron Perlman. Ron Get him to play Dozo Zappa because he looks like a monster. He's got like that horrible... And that really thick things. twin, or exactly. uh, chin, really thick. I mean, he did a great... I liked him as Hellboy because he looked like Hellboy, in my opinion, but... Yeah, Ron Perlman for Dozel because he looks horrible. You know, we have... Uh, <laughs> Doesn't get slapped, Neo. Okay, do we have any other questions? I think everybody has it. Okay, so anyways, we were off on a little tangent, as my teacher used to say, chasing, right, chasing rabbits. Uh, we got to kill those rabbits and move on. So last week we covered some very basic uh, discussion of modifications, alterations, right. weathering, tools. So let's just go over um, – so I know, Ben, you have a couple of tools with you today Yeah, uh, um, we have mentioned. But you can work it in however you want and in whatever capacity you want. So where do you want to start? Well, I brought in – I couple tools okay. that I have used for things like, uh, if you want to switch the yeah, camera. Yeah, switch over to the camera too. For things like weathering and battle damage, these are some hobby files I've used. These are I was going to say, yeah, take them out so they can see. Various shapes of metal files, round ones, pointed ones, square ones. Does the grit level change on them? Or these, no? are, these are all the same. They're all fairly rough. These are not for cleanup. These are for like heavy-duty modification. Right. Like if you wanted to scratch up armor and do battle damage... This would be the way to do it. These files are really good for that. Um, as a little example, I brought in this guy. This is my Perfect Grade Zaku 2. This is a kit that I've had for a long time, but I recently finished up and heavily modified and did a lot of battle damage and weathering and things like that on him. Um, the Perfect Grade kits, those are the biggest kits really that Bandai makes that are... The most detailed. There are bigger kits, like your mega size mm -hmm. is bigger than this, but the mega size does not have the full internal skeleton like this does. No, it is basically the, uh, you, you compared it to like a large high grade. It's like a large high grade. This one, you could open up the armor, take off parts, and there's a skeleton underneath it. But, and also um, the price point on a perfect grade. This one's not too bad. This no? one you can get for about 120 now because this is one of the very uh, first ones that ever came out. Oh, okay, okay. This one came out back in like, hey, the, Kyle. back in 99, I think. So this is a very old kit. Okay. In a lot of ways, probably like the mega size is probably a little bit better than this. It hasn't aged terribly well. But just no, I remember the, when you were working on it too, because also yeah, don't I, the don't the weapons come separately? Yeah, this this I was working on the weapons kit came separately. Like he's got this Sturm Faust rocket and well, the they axe, can't see that if you want to turn the other as way. well as the uh, <laughs> missiles on the legs. These all came out in a separate like a uh, additional kit that I got later on. But um, just as an example on this guy, some of the stuff you could do with the files. If you look at the shield, there's etched detail. Like normally, this is all just one flat piece of plastic. But using these files, I was able to etch into some extra panels. Like you can actually see there's segments in the armor. I don't know if you can see that from your side as well. Yes, but. I can see the segments. And mm -hmm. then you gave some interesting pointers when it came to battle damage and weathering that right. you have to think about what's yeah, like going with, on here. With this one, um, something we'll get into, I think we should probably get into when we when you finally start working on your yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. mega size, is coming up with a concept of the kit from the get-go. Like, uh, you have the kit, and you want you know you want to do something to it, but, like, what's your concept? What, what, what kind of damage did it take? What kind of battlefields does it fight in? Even what's the story of the pilot, you know? And you can work that into your design. And this, it seems kind of basic at first, but what it is is I took a regular... Gundam Zaku scheme, which is greens, and then misted it all with a desert paint scheme. And the paint for the desert scheme is slowly peeling off to where you see the original color underneath, like he's been in battle and the paint's slowly wearing off. 
And the idea was is the arm was blown off at some point, and it was replaced with the arm off a construction unit, which is why it's yellow, yellow. and striped with black. Sweet. And that kind of thing is just the kind of thing you want to work into your ideas when you're going through a kit. What do you? What's the story? How can you express the story? And I think Zaku's really lend themselves to being beat up and weathered, and because they're just the ground pounders. These are the grunts. They don't get any love in the story. They're just basically shot down by the hundred. So I always like the idea of the story. What's the one good guy in like North Africa that's fighting with one of these? What happened to him? You know. You know, was he wants he, to keep his he yeah. wants to keep his kit going, and how yeah, where he found how, parts. How would he keep his suit going after three months of battle? You know, how would that look after that? And that's kind of where this concept for this one came from. And like I like I had mentioned, there's uh, additional weapon kits for some of these that came out. Like the missile pods on the legs are not default; you had to buy those separately. The light up on the axe uh, is a separate thing you bought. Same thing with the Sturmfaust. But the other thing that that's cool that came with this guy was uh, clear armor parts. So hmm. you could put on clear armor parts and see the skeleton underneath. Very cool. And then also, I think the LED kit for the, the, the eye, if you will. The LED for the eye came in the normal kit, but this guy had actually gotten damaged back when I lived in California in an earthquake, and the electronics didn't work anymore. So I actually had to wire in new electronics through the chest with through a little T light because the original battery compartment was destroyed. But, you know, not too bad, all things considered, coming out of an earthquake. You know, it could have been a lot worse. But, yeah, just as an example of what you can do. And like people are saying in the chat, uh, story, you can work into your kit just, just by having this guy on the shelf. Yeah, he looks cool and everything, but you look at it and you think, oh, how did that arm get there? You know, why is the one shoulder red, you know, because the red is usually like no. a sign of a commander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I like the the hand, how the hand or the forearm is mm -hmm. is of a like a construction a construction unit that maybe it salvaged it from there, you know. Right, and even just other little things like there's damage on the bicep where there's a hole in the armor, and there's oil smeared around it, like a yeah, like a maybe a line broke and there's like a oil pumping line. out of there or hydraulic fluid, exactly. But little things like that, and you can work these into any scale, but. I think it's really fun to do on a big scale kit. I really need to get you started on that mega size for that. Because I, I want to just bounce ideas off you and have some fun. So we have a question from Sean, actually. He says, yeah. how do the missile pods mount on the sides? Uh, they just pop right on. Like you just you can just pop these off. It's a little hinge. Let me see if I can reach it around on this side. I see. It's like a, almost like a belt. Whoops. Like a belt almost. There you go. Come on. You got it? Almost. I'm at a bad angle. There we go. There we go. There you just go. Just mounts yeah. around the side. It's not popped in. They just kind of rest on the leg. But you could make it pop in if you wanted to. You, you could put it on there permanently. You could put like a peg there. Does that peg like a hole? It doesn't for a peg, peg into anything. It really just sits there. Okay. But um, if you wanted to, you could make them more permanent. I wanted to keep them kind of loose. Just in case you want to take them off. Just in case I want to take it off, pose it differently, that kind of thing. But yeah, that's just an example of what you can do. And I don't think in terms of like modification, I spent more than maybe $30 on this in terms of paint. Like the most I bought was like some of these little weathering kits, which we've highlighted before, the sand and the dirt. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use those for tons of other kits, so they go a long way. But with this too, my goal was to do spending as little as possible. Um, a lot of paints I just had lying around, left over from other projects and stuff like that. And... Really, the most of it was just repairing like the stuff that was damaged in the earthquake. We had a question here, and I don't know, for some reason it looked like it glitched over. It said, uh, Sean was talking about magnetizing pieces. Yeah, there are, certain, magnets. there are ways to like incorporate magnets into kits. Like if you wanted to, you could put a little rare earth magnet into this and the inside of the leg and just have it pop on that way. Right, right, right. Um, some kits have that, have that right out of the box, but not any Bandai ones that I'm aware of. But um, I use a lot of magnets in my costumes and stuff like that. Like, I don't know if you remember my yeah, yeah, yeah. costumes. Like, I'll have the mask come off, and that's a magnetic part. I'll have, like, the ammo pieces come off the guns, and those are magnets. So I use a lot of those magnetic parts in my costumes, especially in the, in the more recent helmets. Like, the whole thing has come apart with just magnets, <laughs> just to make it easier to ship. Yeah, exactly. Especially yeah. if you're having to go to a con or something like that, you can break it down in pieces. But I think my favorite part of this kit is just the light-up axe that's so cool <laughs> i don't even know that tiny little battery that fits in there that is just like the coolest thing 
And once again, you need a you need to order or find that those pieces. Yeah, these are separate. hard. These are hard to find. The only way I found this was I had a friend that went to a anime con. Okay. And they had sold her this this add on kit as if it was a Gundam model. And she wasn't aware. She oh, was kind of like the flight pack, kind of like yeah. They're like, pack, oh, just buy know. buy a kit, and they just sold her this. Just I think just to get it off the shelf because nobody was going to buy this unless they already had the core model. So unfortunately, she got kind of hosed. But uh, I found out she had them. Like, hey, those are kind of rare. Let me buy it off you, and then you can just you know do whatever you you do whatever you want from there. And hopefully, it didn't sour your opinion on Gundam models too much. This one guy trying to kind of rip you off, but. I kind of made out like a bandit in the end, so I can't complain too much. Awesome. Well, once again, guys, this is this is something that I believe that anyone could do. It takes just time, effort, creativity, thought, and really just having fun with it. And like you said, telling a story. Maybe that's the best way to do. It. Last week we actually spoke about two Gundam series. Uh, one in particular that mm-hmm. people have drawn, um, the OS Eight. Yeah, this is this is very much in the line of O Eight MST. Oh, like, yeah, how how would these look? in a real battle type situation. And you see that a lot in that yes, show. You yes. see like ones running around with busted shoulders and broken knees and things. You're like, how did any of this happen? And you only get like the briefest glimpse in that show of what some of these random everyday soldiers were putting up with and the kind of stuff they did on the battlefield. So stuff like this is a good way to, to branch that out in your mind. And you'll see a lot of people, they even write like full on stories, like which they'll like make up what unit it was from, where did it fight? Who was the pilot? And just go with it from there. And there are tons of Gundam side story mangas focused on stuff like that, like little snippets of what was going on somewhere in the world. Maybe, maybe one day we'll have one written by Ben. I don't know about that. Yeah. But. <laughs> so <laughs> well, we have be uh, model kits, that's for sure. We have a bunch of people chiming in. Varun, obviously, anyone can build. I agree, hundred percent. Time, time, Oz, fourteen, best hobby for these times. You know, I agree 100%. We had a lot of people, right, you know, actually during while, while we actually bought our first run of Gundam right before this lovely craziness, mm-hmm. and we had it here, and I was surprisingly, by the time we reopened two months later, majority of the kits were gone because we had been meeting people here privately, and, you know, they're buying kits, and, you know, some very large kits to eat up as much time as possible. Yeah, this, this, the perfect grades are complicated kits. Like I said, this one's older, so it hasn't, it's not as complicated as some of these more recent ones, and there's only a handful of them. But uh, even the perfect grades, which are the, the biggest ones they make and the most complicated, even those, no, no fancy tools needed. No. And you can build those. I think I built my perfect grade unicorn in about a week. Right, you know little I mean? time here and there. A little, little bit here and there. And even that, not painted, just a little bit of sanding cleanup. It looks great in my shelf. Eventually, I'm going to paint it and clean it up and do all kinds of crazy stuff to it. But even on its own, they look great. So even even if you just want like a big, impressive piece to put on your, on your shelf, these are great picks. Yeah. And like I said, these older ones, this one goes for maybe 120. I've seen it go as low as 100. So if you guys want something larger, perfect grade. If you want something bigger than this one, the mega, mega size. size one. And then, of course... We're going to go through a couple other kits as well. So, Mega size makes this look tiny. Yeah. It's the guy cool. had one here at Build Night last week, and it was nuts. Yeah, it was Zaku also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Christos. Yeah, Greek's gun, Gunpla. So uh, here we go. So Sean asks, and we get this question asked quite a bit, actually. What would be a good beginner kit? I noticed mm. the new HG Ilbo? Ibo? IBO. IBO are nice. Um, go for it. Well, we actually, I actually, this gives me a good chance to segue into what I think is a really good <laughs> beginner kit. Thank you for that question. Let me just move this one back a little bit. I can't. He's too heavy. Ah. Well, this is one of the Cross Silhouette SD kits. If we'll put it switch. over to oh, sorry, switch, switch the camera. All right. Yep. Switch over to that camera. Bam. The Cross Silhouette kits are the SD model kits. These are the new line. I'll show you what it looks like. I'll show you what one of them that looks like. This is not the exact one, but this is one from my girlfriend's collection, actually. She built this. But these are great, highly detailed little kits that you can build in one night. And the SD just stands for super deformed. It's kind of like that squashed kind of cutesy look. But the real great thing about the cross silhouette kits is you can add an additional frame that you buy, the silhouette frame, Mm -hmm. and it makes the kit taller, more poseable, and it changes the the proportions to make it a a little less comical. Right, exactly. But just like the modern high grades... There, I don't think there's any stickers on this guy at all. Even like the little red piece in the crotch, which is usually a sticker on these Gundam kits, that's color correct on I this I think guy. the 08. 
Yeah, the only parts that are stickers on these guys are like the 08, and they give you options to if right. you wanted to put any kind of number on it. But all the main parts are perfectly color correct, and I believe on this one too, they even give you the option of switching the eyes out. Like you see, you take off the top of the head, you take off the centerpiece, turn it around, and then you get the more comical, like real eyes, anime style eyes inside the suit. So SD kit, you know, I've, I've, I've built a, actually I built that one and modified it to do that black and white. That's the one that's, oh yeah, that's true. You have the the same guy, black and white that I wanted to do. And I I have to say I had a lot of fun with it. It was cool because the service area was a lot larger for me to be able to mess around with it. And also the investment is what, $15. And if you mess it up, I mean, what's worse that's going to happen. Yeah. The guy you're selling here, which is not this exact same Gundam, but it's the original Gundam. You're selling it for 15 and these are, like I said, great for starters, great if you haven't really built a kit before, great if you're trying to get someone who hasn't built one in the past into kits. His backpack is so heavy, it's kind of making him fall back. <laughs> actually, Miami Gumpla actually said, you can use the head of the SD on a high grade. It looks really good, too. Yeah, Mecha Gukatsu was doing that on some of his videos. He's another uh, Gundam YouTuber. You can take some of these parts, and they're interchangeable with other high grade kits. So if you want to do like, <laughs> your, if you want to do like a custom Gundam with this giant head... You can do that. And some of them look pretty good. You know, it's kind of weird. Some of the combinations you can do. Yeah. We have uh, time 14 says you can mix cross silhouette with HG for awesome results. Right, right, right. Like you say, like I said, a lot of these parts are compatible. Any of these joints usually work, especially the modern ones work with one another very well. So yeah, if you're looking into getting into the kit, into these kits, I definitely recommend some of these cross silhouette ones because these are pretty cool. And you even and the weapons ones, also too. fit in its backpack, right? Yeah, and this guy, all these. Uh, Does he have extra weapons? I think. Yeah, he, yeah. Well, he has like an extra machine gun and an extra cannon. So you have you know all these little pieces, and it's it's really cool the different setup. They have a bunch of like options or ideas for articulation on the actual box itself, mm-hmm. and you know you can play around with it and. Like you said, it took like, I think about a night and then I modified mine. That was the first time I used, you know, paint. Obviously I was using it incorrectly, um, but it looks, good, though. it looks good. It came out, it was a pain to paint, but I learned a lot from it. And I, that was the first time using the, the model tape. It's not incorrect. It's just, that's, that's how you envisioned it. Yes. That's how I, env- <laughs> that's how I envisioned it. There's I want to no do, the idea was way. to do black and white just to kind of do something different. And I plan to do it with a larger kit because I think that's an interesting scheme to follow. Yeah, it's kind of got a neat look about it. Like, um, and that's kind of true, too, when I talk about like uh, World War in space. I don't know if you know anything about uh, naval history, mm-hmm. but there was a paint job they would do on ships called dazzle paint. Mm-hmm. And it was usually that black, white, gray in just weird asymmetrical right, colors right, right. and lines. And the idea was is a submarine would look at you, and they couldn't tell which side of the ship was the front. Right, right, right. So they exactly. couldn't tell which direction you were heading, and it was difficult to aim. Same kind of thing you work with these. Exactly. Same kind of concept. Why or not? even like the uh, the the planes where they paint the belly, you know, like yeah. the bluish color, and then the or no white, and then they paint the top blue. I paint the top like a color that would be difficult to see at night. Or, or water, like you know, yeah. from above you would see water, and then from or from below you would see a sky. You know, you right. think it's just a exactly. cloud or something. Exact same kind of thing, and that's like I said, that's the kind of thing where you can start putting an idea like what happened to this kit in, into your model, even on even on cutesy stuff like this. Yeah, and we actually have um, we actually have uh, some thirty minute missions. We have um, time offs from Twitch saying thirty minute mission kits are also great for beginners. And actually, yeah. that's what we're going to segue in the latter half of this particular yeah. segment this evening. You can just start taking questions and stuff, and I'm going to start breaking this guy down to sand him, okay. clean him up, and stuff. All right, right on. So, do you want to move that camera in a little bit so that you can be it can be right on top of you? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. While he changes that pose up. Looking good. Good. So, well, yeah, perfect. So with a 30-minute mission, we actually built this uh, two weeks ago. Yeah. Of the Alto, right? Uh, this guy. It was this. actually this one. The, is this an Alto? No, this is a, a Rybot. I keep on okay, saying Okay, Rybot. There you it's go. A, or Robot? Is it Rybot or Rob, or Ribiot? I don't know. So, along those lines. I was just keep on saying Rybot so, just for consistency. <laughs> so we, uh, Ben built the 30-minute mission here. 30-minute missions obviously are designed to be built in 30 minutes, 30 minutes or so. 
Ben was actually kind of cheating because he's so familiar with the kit. Yeah, I was taking questions and stuff, so I wasn't following the book. He quite was, as much yeah, as I he wasn't really referencing. If you want to get in the camera, you want to move closer towards your. There you go. Let me just move. There my you butt, go. Perfect. Because that's easier than moving the camera um, sometimes. So with the thirty minute mission, Ben actually completed the entire build within I think twenty three or twenty seven minutes or something just like in, that. Just in the nick of time, more or less. Just in the nick of time. So we had the build the the kit completed. The instructions on the thirty minute mission are a little different than um uh, a regular kit but actually they're more simplistic yeah because the kits are laid out on the runners in such a way to where you just follow them top to bottom like if you see the video if you pull up the other episode the episode he's talking about episode two you'll see that at some point i have to stop and say i'm not doing a good job of showing this because i'm not even looking at the instructions that's how easy it is and that's not even just because i do this all the time it's just laid out in such a way you can clearly see okay these are the arms this is the head, this is the skirt, et cetera, et cetera. So with the, we have a couple of questions coming in. Before we sure, get sure, there, sure. why don't you explain, and Sean, we'll get to your question in two seconds, brother. Uh, why don't you explain what it is exactly you're doing right now? So what these are, these are matador sanding sticks. Um, it's basically... Matador, like... Matador is the particular line. Oh, uh, okay, okay. That's the brand of these. These are very beat up. I've gotten a lot of use out of them. But these are nothing more than basically just a spongy stick with sandpaper on either side. So like a glorified nail file? Basically glorified nail file. Um, and speaking of that, there's nothing particularly special about it. I mean, they're nice to have. It's kind of like the same thing with the nippers I was talking about. You have the Cadillac nippers. Right, right, These exactly. are the Cadillac sanding sticks. But if you just wanted to take a popsicle stick and some regular 3M sandpaper like this and just attach it to the popsicle stick with some double-sided tape or some glue, these work just as well as anything else. So we have two options, people. Popsicle stick with some sandpaper. Now, the, the, the one thing, we always try to make things as simple as possible because right. everybody may not understand what we're talking about. So we're talking about grit. Yeah. So it needs to be, I assume, a higher grit. This one specifically, these are 3M Extra Fine 400. 400, uh, so that's The higher bad. the number, the Finer finer the it is. For Gundam, the sweet spot is between 400 and 600. 400 is what I prefer. And if you wanted to just polish it up, you might want to go 600, possibly up to 1,000. But I think 400, 600 will pretty much do you for everything. And even these sanding sticks, you can't see them too well because I've used these so much. But even here, it tells you what grid it is, 600. Okay, I perfect. Well I see, see that. It. Yeah, I see it. On the 400, it's almost completely gone because I use that <laughs> more than anything. Okay. So but, you want to pay attention to grit because you don't want to use a low grit number. Yeah, if you like use, a 60. If you use like a 60 or an 80, <laughs> that's like basically what these files are. <laughs> that's for like doing battle damage. You might not like what happens after. Now these. you can do a lot with that if you're if you're going for battle damage, right. but if you're doing cleanup, not the best bet. So right now, now Ben is just working through cleanup, getting rid of the the indentations of the nubs, I assume. Yeah, there's little bits of nubs. And the other thing too is if we want to make this a thing where we keep keep coming back to it, mm -hmm. eventually we're going to paint this guy. And any kit that you're going that you're going to paint, you want to make sure you sand it, because the tolerances, if you add paint and clear coat and things, will get a little bit tighter. So by sanding apart beforehand, you'll kind of eliminate that problem before it happens, because you're taking off a little bit of the plastic, and then the paint will be adding some onto the plastic. Okay, perfect. So you end up with a cleaner product overall. So like, we had Sean. The question that Sean asked previously was, do you? <laughs> Do you generally just nipper every everything assembled, then sand and paint after? Me personally, I'll, I do a god hand nipper to get very close to a part. I may come back at a part a second go with a nipper or with a hobby knife, like an exacto blade, if I want to get particularly close. Mm -hmm. But then usually I'll just sand Randall. it with a six hundred or a four hundred. Usually the four hundred, and I'll call that part done. Now, every kit I build, even if I just do straight builds, because a lot of kits I build and I don't necessarily have the time to paint them and I want to come back to them later, though, at some date in my head, I will do the sanding on it regardless. So does that answer your question, Sean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, for me, like the idea is I sand everything just because I like to think that eventually I'll be able to come back to everything and paint it. Now, I have seen people like literally leave everything on the runner, paint it. Then cut it off. You can do that, especially with some of the modern kits. You can get away with that because the color the color accuracy is so good. The only problem is is that a lot of kits where the plastic 
of their runner connects to the part, which is called the gate. It's on the outside of the part. Like you can see like yes, a little I white a mark. Little white That's knob. where the gate connects to the part. And to get rid of that little mark, you got to sand it or something. Obviously, if you're going to eventually cut it out, there's not going to be any paint there. You can come <laughs> back and touch it up. But it needs to be exact. But you need to be very careful and, like you say, very exact. Now, there are some kits that have a feature called undergating, which is all the gates attached to the underside of the part that you will never see. You see that a lot on kits that have like gold armor or like reflective coatings. So like I'm assuming the metal perfect grade kits will have it underneath it? Not necessarily all of them because it has to be a kit that's designed with it from the get-go. Because you can buy like this Zaku I mentioned. You can buy that in metallic, but the, the runners are exactly the same. It's just a different color. So hmm. if you cut it off, it's still going to have those marks. Okay. But there are certain kits where in the show they're shiny and metallic. Like you might be familiar with the Hayukashiki which mm -hmm. is Char's suit from Zeta Gundam. Yes. It's all bright gold and reflective. Right. So when you buy a kit of that, they knew they were going to do it gold from the outset because that's what it was. So all the parts are under gated. Okay. But those are kind of few and far between. All right. The ones that have the under gating. So we have, hopefully that answered, uh, that's kind of segue it, into yeah, it's, painting it's a bit of a on a render. It's a bit of a complicated answer. TLDR, you can do it, but there will be an extra step. And then I've seen some people that paint it on the runner and then they'll like mount it in a frame and hang it up on a wall and just have like, it's a completely painted kit, but it's like it's never snapped off the runner. Right. It's, a, it's kind of like a certain aesthetic that some people do. So we actually had Sean coming back and he said, I've been nipping and sanding before assembly and my patient wanes and sometimes I just want to rush to the end. Ha ha. That's, so. the, way I, that's the way I do it. I, will, I, will, I, will, I cut and sand every part before I assemble. That makes sense. Some people don't like to do that. And I'll admit I'm in the minority for that. Most people prefer to build in stages. They'll build like an arm at a time, a leg at a time. But just for me, I prefer to do it all at once because my idea is I'm always going to come back to these in the end anyway. But then also when you say all at once, you because you actually cut all the pieces off. Yeah, I cut all the pieces off. And then off, you sand everything. Put them all in one bin, sand them all, and then I'll separate them and build them from there. Yeah, it's a little more complex. There's one yeah. bit out there. It's not, it's not the best way Miami to Miami Gumpla it. says, I use a belt grinder. That, hey man, you can do whatever you want to sand down your pieces. You probably don't have a whole lot of plastic left after. Yeah, you might <laughs> you know? have to be very, very careful with that so you don't lose your finger too, you know? <laughs> so Sean, uh, Sean replies back, so I got some 1600 grit from a hobby store. Is that overkill? That's probably a bit overkill because you won't be able to sand down the nub much. <laughs> I was going to say, you're not going to see a lot of impact. But um, I've got sanding sticks that are 2,000 and then 6,000. Because Whoa. the idea is you can polish these to like a mirror finish if you want. And there are like things like uh, jet, jet plane canopies and things like that on model kits. Mm -hmm. Where if you scratch that, how do you get rid of that? You just got to sand it super, super fine to get rid of that little scratch so, so six, 1600 if you're going to get rid of nibs probably overkill but worth having if you want to do some really fine cleanup Brun like i said the sweet spot is four and six hundred i think for removing nibs so we have rune commenting once again want to re edify 400 to 600 grit it's going to be a finer grit so when you go and buy it Make sure that you're clear on what number you want because yeah, a lot of people don't know what we're talking the, about. On the 3M ones, it'll say P400 mm -hmm. or P600. Yeah, even on the blocks, it'll say it. The blocks, I don't I don't recommend using. No, they're for, too big, right? For yeah, for, they're too big, and the, the grits on those, they're ne they never behave like what they say. Mm. Like you'll get an 80, and it feels like a 120. Mm. But that's just I use those a lot for cosplay because it's for bigger stuff. But yeah. for model kits, I do not recommend using the sponges like you find at Home Depot. Okay. You can get hobby sponges, which are, you know, better. Like I know Tamiya sells them. Uh God Hand sells their own brand of sanding sponges too, but they're smaller like this. Right. I haven't used them, so I can't say that they don't behave like that as well, but I doubt it. I'm sure they're probably a little more a little more uh discerning when it comes to the grit and how it behaves considering the size I'd of imagine. the stuff you're working on. I'd imagine so. With yeah. Varun asking, or Varun makes comment, RG New Gundam has good undergating. Yeah, that's one of the ones that does have undergating because when they released that, they knew that they wanted to have special coating ones come out. They wanted to do like a, a silver one or a gold one. So they want to do less impact on the cut. 
Yeah. To Jeopardy because they're spending all that money anyways and painting or coloring the kit or well, molding they, it. They they know that they can come out with like a coating version of that and it will sell because the RG new gun is so good and then they can charge honestly a lot for it. Hmm. And people will buy it because that's a very nice kit. But uh even the RGs, those are few and far between where they have undergating. So we have here New Gun Plus says the cutting and sanding increases the chances of losing a piece too. Um it does you I'd recommend Give yourself plenty of workspace. You know, if you're going to build somewhere, build somewhere with either tile floors or like a nice uh, bright white carpet so that you can see the part when it falls. When, people. When it falls, not it, if. It will inevitably when. happen. It's just a matter of time. I have lost pieces, broken pieces. I've seen I've seen uh, forums where people are like, oh, do you have this random piece, extra piece? This is what I'm looking oh, yeah. for. It could be a vital piece, and then you'll be like, literally, you won't be able to put a, build an arm together. Or something I, like I had that. a few pieces missing from that Zaku I had to go digging around for, and actually the front of his machine gun uh, had gotten lost in the move from California, so I had to make a new one out of leftover parts I had around. But that was after I was going on forums and stuff asking if anyone had Yeah. One. No, I've I've seen I've seen when it comes to building kits, even myself, because of the amount of cats that I have, it definitely oh, no. can get interesting because they like the clicky, they want like the plastic. What they are you like, doing? They want to get up. They want to get up on it. So what I've learned is I I build a very cautiously, and I'm I literally have my hand like cupped around the piece as I cut it, so that I'm as I nip it off the runner because I know it's going to go somewhere, and once it hits the floor, it is fair game. So I haven't had one of them digest it yet, but. It could happen in the near future. So once again, be cautious. Uh, we have uh, Time Oz 14 from Twitch said, I tend to use 1500 grit most of the time. Like like Ben said, it's really up to your personal preference, what you like. That's a great thing about Gundam. Anyone can get into it. You can do what you like. You know, it, it's pretty much like how we should be living our life in general. Yeah. Don't live your life according to someone else's standard. Live it towards, as long as you're not hurting yourself physically or hurting someone else or even mentally hurting yourself or hurting someone else, I think it's okay. It's, yeah. it's fair game. You can obviously explore different options with the Gundam. I mean, I'll have to bring one of my kids maybe next week, the one that I really beat that, the, really beat up really bad with the Dremel because I want to see how much abuse that plastic could take. Yeah, bring that thing in. And so we have, you know, it, it looks very beat up, but nonetheless, I gave it a shot. I, I saw what was going to happen to it, and I saw, you know, what was possible the next thing. So we have here Sean um, from Facebook – Miami, when, or excuse me, uh, he's actually talking to Miami Gumpla. When I introduced my brother in law and his wife to Gumpla, we spent more time on the kitchen floor looking for pieces than assembling. Yeah, but that's bonding time, man. Yes. It's bonding time. Yes. It's always funny whenever a piece hits the floor here at Flynn's because everyone the floor works is out their great. phones and their lights and everything. Everyone knows, like, when someone pushes a chair out, like, that means, and they're looking for it, they know that the piece, and we've, we found most of them, but if it pops under the rug, or pops underneath one of the machines, the likeliness of you getting back is I, I lost, when I was slim. building this Zaku here, I lost one of the little links on his pipe, his energy cable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I thought it was gone. I'm like, well, I'm never going to find that little thing. Two weeks later, I came in here and I just randomly saw it lying on the floor. Nice. <laughs> so nice. I got very, very lucky. So sometimes, see, the, the pieces stick around. Because, some, you know, hey, you can sweep as best as you can, but just because you sweep doesn't mean you got to sacrifice to the yeah. dumpling Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I'm always cautious. After Thursday nights, I come in here with the broom and I take my time in sweeping. And then I also mm -hmm. look, um, I also look to make sure that the trash bin doesn't have any loose pieces in it, mm -hmm. in my little, uh, you know, the dust bin, because I don't want to throw anything away, hap you know, haphazardly. So... We have that. Uh, we have uh, Miami Gunpla Club. Once again, check them out on Instagram, everybody. Miami Gunpla Club. Nail shop buffing squares work wonders for me. And, yes. And that, that actually leads me to an interesting thing. You don't always have to go to a hobby store to get the pieces that you need. Or, no. the, or not pieces, but the tools you need. No. Um, nail shops, beauty stores, uh, yeah. ha um, Harbor Freight. Yeah, these uh, these sanding files I got from Harbor Freight. Yeah, Harbor Freight. Um, I mean, I was starting to buy. I've I've bought paints at Home Depot. You know the the rattle cans. I've bought different spray paints from them. I've bought, um, heck, they you guys use a uh, freaking floor shine. Yeah, um, a common <laughs> from a like common, Walmart. A very common uh, clear coat is Future Floor Polish, which works really well. But um, like he says with the sanding sticks, like I'm sure if there's any women watching this these. These things look identical to the kind you'd use when you're doing your manicures. There's really the only difference on them 
I'm willing to bet they're probably made in the same factories and everything. The only difference is they're just sold to, to a different, you know, clientele and the packaging is different, but they behave exactly the same, you know, and it's all just a matter of just putting it on the stick is just, just to make it easier on your hands. And so you get some more control over it. Yeah. But, uh, and as you can see, Ben's just taking his time, you know, sanding everything off. You are out of shot on the camera, just so you know. So, yeah, there you go. Thank you. Thank so, you. Sorry. Uh, Varun, I got Zaku's hand armor back, Ben. Eddie, you need a white carpet. Yeah. Well, Varun, if you want to pay for that white carpet and pay for that to be replaced often, white carpet in an arcade would be, would be oh, man, that would be bad. Um, I yeah, would love Zaku's hand armor. That's the one he was talking about. That's yeah. the piece that we that he had found. That's good that he found it. You know, I mean, I, I couldn't believe it because I just thought it was gone. I was like, no, nah, no way, it's gone. <laughs> another another piece uh, enters the uh, the abyss. I forget where I was. It was either oh, it was an antique store. I was at an antique store. Mm -hmm. They actually had like a glass bin that you could see through of all the broken shards of everything that people had knocked into and oh, broken geez. to warn you not to do it. That'd be kind of funny. Like we have a little like plastic cup. Like oh, you know, this piece is no longer usable. Yeah, just you know, like cracked, lost broken, to the ages. You know, so that'd be interesting. Uh, Lewis from Facebook. I was never really into Gundam. Bit. I was never really into Gundam. But after watching your streams, I think I'm going to give it a shot. I'll be stopping by and looking at your kits. Awesome, Lewis. Yeah, check well, it out, hey, man. check it out. We um, we usually wait to. Uh, What's it called? We usually, well, better yet, we open at five o'clock. So, by all means, five o'clock Monday through uh, Friday. And then Saturday, we open at 1 p.m. And Sunday, we open at 12, at 12 p.m. But by all means, you can come on by, Lewis, anytime you want. Check it out. Sean replies, go for, go for it, Lewis. Yeah, Sean actually came back last night right as I was uh, beginning to shut everything down. And uh, he grabbed a couple of kits. He grabbed the last Nobel and he grabbed a 30 minute mission as well. Yeah. And don't be afraid to get into the model kits, even if you're not familiar with the show. There's lots of people that just build it just because they like the, they just like the hobby. They like the experience of building the models and they never watch the shows at all. It's just I, whatever. It's me. You, yeah. Cause and I have it tattooed on my skin. There you go. Because <laughs> so like, for me, it's like I, I, I built a couple models from Iron Blooded Orphans before I even saw the show just because I liked the way they looked and I like building the models. It's kind of like it's a good relaxing experience for me. It's just like a, a fun thing I do to unwind after work. So I think that's, uh, you know, we're hitting our, our mark, guys. We usually like to kid it around the hour. The, the fun surely does fly when we're having a good time together. And that right. it's a perfect segue that when it comes to kit building, this is a great escape. Um, uh, from the monotony of your day to day. Especially so now. <laughs> if you, especially now in general, really, you know, um, our lives really haven't changed too much other than mass all the time. <laughs> so, yeah. But nonetheless, it's a great segue. You know, a lot of times when it comes to our day to day humdrum life, if you will, it's always good to take breaks. And I recommend what I, what I was talking to my wife about today, about the 90, 20 split, which means 90 minutes working on, let's say day to day work or projects. And then that 20 minute break, you might have a boss or an employer who's okay with you doing something at your desk or something totally different. Oh, you're lucky. If you do have <laughs> one, take advantage of it, you know, bust out a kit. People are, I guarantee you people are going to be coming. What the heck is this guy doing? Um, but in general, if you have a, a you know, you work from home or you're in furlough or something like that, take those breaks. They're necessary for our mental health, for our uh, relaxation. And here I am preaching to you guys, but I myself need to employ it even more so because I've been really infatuated with just working on different concepts for the different companies I own as well as Flynn's and expanding it, growing it, ensuring its survival and all that good stuff. So just my little tidbit of, of, of thoughts. So just to recap, guys, we went over a bit of weathering. Uh, we have Ben still steadily working on sanding down the nubs off of the 30-minute mission right. we built. Well, we went over a couple things we have in stock. Yes, we do have a couple of things in stock. Well, we have more than this, this, but we do have oh, a couple yeah, things. Oh, yeah, but this was the big one that everyone big one. Really So we in. have the EVA. Evangelion Unit 1. Very cool kit if you want to get into some of the more advanced model kits, the real grade line. This is pretty much the newest of the real grades. So detail, posability, Articul I mean, it's articulation crazy. to the nines. This is pretty much as good as it gets for Evangelion if you're into that show. And then we also discussed some kits for beginners. Like we had here the uh, cross silhouette kits. Cute little SD model kits, great for those maybe not into models specifically, maybe not into Gundam, but like these cute little guys to put on their shelf. They're very poseable. These ones in particular come with like a lot of accessories. He's got a lot of different guns. Um, very 
very good color accuracy, not a lot of stickers. In this, in this case, I think he's only got the stickers for the eyes and the camera, that's it. So very accessible, especially too, if you've got some youngins, these are great ones to show them. And then we also showed some examples of some more advanced kits you could do. Like this guy I did up, <laughs> this perfect grade Zaku, all weathered up, battle damaged, and even like a little bit of my own imagination in the concept of what happened to the arm and the various little details all over him. But uh, and the yeah. different tools we have, I mean, yeah. And then we also talked about the uh, files and sanders, as well as a little bit of the weathering kits, like I used on this guy. But these, these are like a simple. I think I paid ten, twelve dollars for these at Harbor Freight, and it's every size you need, and they're metal, they'll last forever, and great for doing battle damage, um, and all that kind of stuff. So, and we really goodbye. hope, guys, as you as you follow this journey. We're going to be obviously ripping off the audio and going to also uploading this to a podcast, hopefully in the near future. And we'll be going through the 30 minute mission gradually together and showing you different effects, weathering, battle damage, so on and so forth. So you guys can explore the goodness there. We do Maybe have we'll even get to paint and stuff. What was that? Yeah, no, definitely the airbrush. I want to see, I'd like to show them. Hand painting as well as airbrush because some people might be intimidated by an airbrush or maybe not. Do a little have, bit of both. Yeah, they may not have the uh, affordability for it. You know, there's a little bit of hand good. painting in this guy. So we also uh, Miami Gunpla reminds us once again off of Twitch this Thursday the RX78 Revive Kit will be one of our giveaways. We'll be give our giveaway yes. for a build night. Everyone that attends, we're just going to do like we usually do: two raffle tickets, throw them in into the pot and then we'll pull the thing right as everybody's going to get ready you to said leave. they have to bring a kit or something to work they need on. to bring something to work on like they yeah. either have to buy a kit here or bring something you just can't show if up you, to sit there if you don't have a kit we got a large selection here of beginner stuff as well as more advanced kits to pick out but bring something of your own too if you got you know dnd minis on. warhammer dnd minis uh dolls anything you want that yeah. you have something to work on bring your Bring some costume stuff. You got some small cosplay, cosplay. props to work on. We got people that do that stuff too. S15 cosplay brings some of his stuff sometimes for, was it Pip Boy or? Uh, Vivi, Vivi Chibi was working on that uh, Demon Slayer helm as well at one point. Yep. And then Roxy brings the dolls in and all that kind of cool stuff. Lewis has a final question for the evening. Sure. What kits would you recommend for a nine year old? I was going to make a mention of some, some things, a segue. Uh, before you reference the kicks is sitting right here. A segue I was thinking about a lot of times is you obviously want to step up the complexity of kits, um, especially if a kid is interested in building. I've noticed a lot of times with Lego, the in the intricacy of Lego has been getting pretty intense in terms of the mat the, the larger kits, the Millennium Falcon, Death Star, so on and so forth. Right. So if you're looking for something to keep your child or grown child interested, you could segue into Gundam. Mm -hmm. It's different. It's it's it, it has a TV show to go alongside of it if you want to show them that. And then age range. I mean, we have here, like uh, Ben had said, stated, we have the. I think these are these SD they're cross quick. silhouette kits are great, quick. For, great for kids because they're quick, but they're still highly posable. And the pieces are pretty durable. Yeah, and they're pretty durable. He's got and like I said, he's got a very cool look to him. Like it's not just small and cute. It's also very. It's also very. He's very accurate to how they look in the show, even with the deformed proportions. They look very cool. And this, and I also, a nine-year-old is probably going to play with an action figure. Yeah, they're going to take is, this. You can play with it. This. You can play with it. Now the fin. What, what do you call the forehead? The fins. Yeah, the, the V crest. Like you yeah. might. That might pop off. If you wanted to really like, ha if you were really worried about your kid like destroying these, you could glue certain parts together. I mean, I can't even get that off. <laughs> so. Yeah, but still, but uh, you know, you could easily, easily, easily play with this kid. I always think of the next phase a child might play with it. And heck, I was at Target the other day or at Target or Walmart. It's been a long time since I bought an action figure. And I was like, you know what? Let me see the, you know what they have. It's like twenty dollars. Yeah, and twenty dollars for an action figure. American action figures have also gotten a lot more simplistic, like they're stupidly simplistic. All because and crude. of cost. They, and crude. They've, they've really figured out that it's like, hey, we don't have to do much, and people will buy these. It's kind of like I think it's kind of the opposite so with dumb. like Japanese models. Like the, the detail and complexity is always just going up because you mentioned Lego. Le not to say that like Lego is not for creative people. It is, and there's lots you can do with Lego. But I think that Gundam really takes it to the next level because like i said it's not just about you know building a cool looking robot it's about adding a story to it in your head and then it's getting more into customizations like paint and weathering and then scratch building making your own parts and everything like that there's a lot you can do with lego but 
you never heard of anyone painting like a Lego kit or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, that's true, modifying it. But it would be an, a, a, a nice segue. Or if you're into erector I mean, sets or link kid, logs, things like that. When I was a kid, I was big into Lego and erector. And this is kind of like the natural evolution, I think. No, I, I agree 100%. And also, like like Ben, you had made a comment about the, uh, the lack of of attention and detail to American toys, even if they're produced in China, manufactured, the design is American. Yeah. Like um, said, it's I'm, very, I'm a, uh, I don't know, man. It's, American companies have realized for a long time that, uh, dumb sells. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can and, get by with very, they can get by with very little. And, and unfortunately that's not a good thing. No. Um, like you compare like Marvel legends figures from 10 years ago, to like oh. the ones coming out now. And it's like, Oh, oh this or is even if of, you compare, <laughs> that's why everyone sad. did a run on the, that's why everyone did a run on the TMT stuff by, uh, NECA, mm-hmm. uh, because of the mere fact that they went old school yeah, with ne- Rocksteady and Bebop and everybody. And from what I saw, it looked a lot more detailed. They were, and the price point was a lot it's higher. It's like $50, $60 yeah, or something. A lot like higher. People you are out there not... buying like 20 kits, like, you know, or like, uh, like 20 different ones at different Walmarts. I'm like, good God. Yeah, it's, it's gotten pretty crazy. But, but like I said, these $15. $15. 15, $15 <laughs> $15 if you wanted to go all out, let's say you put $15 into paints, and you'll get something that is not just, it looks good, but it's something you put on your shelf, and it's like, you did that. Right. That was you. And no two kits will ever look the same. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You can modify it. So yeah. I hope, Lewis, that answers your question. The recommendation, an SD kit. This one's here at Flynn's. We have another one as well, RX-78-2. We have mm-hmm. another one as well over there. We have the Banshee as well. Yep. And we have uh, that one, I believe, 15 as well. And once again, it's going to buy. It's going to be a couple hours of, of entertainment and enjoyment, something they could play with, show their friends off, put it on their bicycle, whatever the case may be, if kids still do that today. And just kids like, hey, where'd you get that cool toy? I made that. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> We're all about creativeness here at Flynn's and just kind of taking it to that next level and hopefully just bringing you more and more of this goodness. So anyways, guys, appreciate you hanging out for the last hour and 11 minutes and seven seconds, eight seconds. And we really appreciate you. I'll uh, let Ben, uh, once again, if you have questions or comments, please, guys, I've seen a lot of people come up to me privately here at Flynn's or if they see me in public and they'll say, hey, I really wanted to get into Gundam, but I don't really know where to start. I don't know this. I don't know that. I don't know how to build it. I don't know modify. And I always recommend them. I mean, I've done it time and time again where I'm like, oh, you come in on Thursday night? All right, let me let me show you to the crew and have them talk to Ben or have them talk to Lewis. Thanks so much for liking the stream. Have them talk to Ben. Have them talk to Christos. Have them talk to everybody. And say, hey, this guy, this this person wants to get into it. What do you guys suggest? Mm-hmm. So if you have questions, Ben's going to let you guys know where to find him. Right. You guys can find me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook primarily as Uber's Cosplay. U-B-E-R-S Cosplay, all one word. Um, we do re-upload these to YouTube, YouTube. after the fact. Mm-hmm. So if you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments. We'll respond there. And like you said, also... If you just want to come out, play some video games, and see, you know, what's everyone working on? What's all this hobby really about? Come out on thurs on Thursdays to Build and Paint Night. I'm usually there every 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 Thursday, but you know, we'll just talk about we could just talk about Gundam. We could just talk about the anime. Even if you don't necessarily want to build something, you just want to see what people are working on, and maybe that'll whet your appetite for the for the hobby. But yeah, come on out. It's so, always fun. So that was Uber's cosplay. His information is on the bottom of the stream. And also, just to segue into that, um, 99, well, a good chunk of time, Shirley comes along with you. Yeah, lately so, I've been dragging her along. So she's, she's, working been coming her along she's been coming along working on her bear kits. And I just wanted to, the reason why I wanted to bring it up is not that you know that we have all these people here, but the mere fact that if you have a significant other, they bring them with you. If they're subtly interested or you want to kind of introduce, inter, introduce them to the hobby you want to get involved with, That'll obviously be able to, um, what's it called? That'll obviously be able a great segue for you. It's to a kind great of, way for you guys to bond. Yeah, for to bond, and also you know it becomes more justifiable to buy kits when you when you can it, buy well, someone else. Well, you're still gonna have to explain to her <laughs> where are all these kits coming from. Oh, I had that already, honey. Didn't you see? I traded someone for I, that. I bought that before I even I, met I you. I traded someone for that because for me it's even worse because since I have access to the inventory, honey, this box has 2020 on it. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I've had I've had times where 
I've had to move stuff into the house, you know, when she was at work. Yeah, so, if you get her addicted, you don't have to justify your addiction. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a lot of hobbies anymore, anymore these days anyways. So it's like, it's nice to have this hobby and, you know, Danny doesn't really bother me about it. But anyways, guys, really appreciate your time. You know where to find Ben. This is Eddie and Ben reporting live from Flynn's Arcade located in Margate, Florida. We open tomorrow, Tuesday at 5 p.m. to midnight for our $10 Tuesdays. Unlimited play for the entire evening for just ten dollars. That's in memory of Grand Prix Racerama. They are no longer in. Uh, they pour are one no- out for the homies. E- here exactly. No we we'll have to pour a, a, <laughs> a bottle of balls on the floor for them. One for the homies. They are no longer in existence. But for those of you who know what they were, we are honoring their memory with ten dollar Tuesdays. And once again, the last plug for our build and paint nights on Thursdays at eight p.m. Remember, this Saturday from two to ten p.m. we have our family fun day and our uh, back to school bash here at Flynn's. We're going to be doing giveaways like the pops I showed you from Everyone Loves Figures, different other giveaways that you'll see on our social media feeds throughout the week from, I believe, ASO Figures, IG Toy Store, Bits and Buttons. We have our our good friend, Sarah Lovelady. Yes, that is her last name. Um, who's a realtor, who's also adding some giveaways as well. Karma Bath Co., and a bunch of different other really cool venues. That's from 2 to 10 p.m. Regardless of what the what the weather is like that day, we will be doing this come hell or high water. So by all means, come on out. So once again, guys, we really appreciate your time. I'm very thankful for you. I hope your day is amazing. And go out and buy that kit. I don't think you can go anywhere to buy a kit right now because most places are closed. Yeah. We'll be here for the next probably 15 minutes. So if you're close... <laughs> You could come now and buy a kit. But yeah, shoot us a text or something. We got Zell. <laughs> exactly. We have Zell. We could hold the kit. But anyways, guys, really appreciate you. I hope you have an amazing evening, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Take okay. care, guys. Take care.